Hey guys, so today we will be doing something a little bit different since the new Star Wars movie will be out in cinemas real soon. We are going to showcase to you the 15 largest spaceships from the Star Wars universe. These spaceships are among the largest in fiction and outsize many of their competing franchise ships such as those of Star Trek with a common Imperial Star Destroyer dwarfing the Enterprise by a mile or so. So in this list we are going to focus on many of the capital ships seen in Star Wars. Not just the movies but the animated flicks and even graphic novels and comics. So in essence, anything canon in Star Wars. We are also going to include the Death Stars on the list since they are ships or to be more exact, weaponized stations and others which are comparable and even bigger than them. But apologies beforehand since we won't be including the Starkiller base as it is not a ship or a station but a modified icy planet that was made into a super weapon. We won't be including the Hosk station as well as it was built around a moon and is simply a planetary megastructure and not a mobile ship. So now that we have that off the table, let us start by putting something common in front for reference. An Imperial Star Destroyer, which is by far the most common and most recognizable ship in this universe. The ship is 1 mile in length or 1.6 kilometers. In comparison, the Rebel Alliance Mon Calamari Cruiser is a bit smaller at 1.2 kilometers. So let's get into the list. At number 15 comes the Mandator 4 class Siege Dreadnought. With a total length of a bit more than 7.6 kilometers or 4.75 miles. Also known as the Mandator 4 class warship and the First Order Dreadnought, it was a model of Siege Dreadnought used by the First Order during their conflict with the Resistance. It had a crew of 53,000 officers, 140,000 enlisted personnel, and 22,000 stormtroopers. The Mandator 4 class was armed with two orbital autocannons that could fire a salvo of two rounds each in quick succession before a recharge was needed. The Starship's dorsal surface featured 26-point defense laser cannons for protection against star fighters and six tractor beam projectors were located on the ship's bow. Next, at number 14, we have the Praetor Mark II Battle Cruiser, which has a length of 8 kilometers as the highest estimate. Also known as the Praetor II class Star Battle Cruiser, it was a warship class that served the Imperial Navy. It was a model in the Star Destroyer design family marked by characteristic wet shape. Considered the largest battle cruiser design known, the Praetor II possessed a dagger shape similar to other prominent warships in the Imperial Navy. The Praetor Mark II battle cruiser possessed at least 90 weapon systems, including various spherical turrets on the dorsal, ventral, and trench areas of the ship. In addition, it also possessed hull armor and deflector shields. Now at number 13 comes the Mandator II class warship which was a powerful vessel. While Star Destroyers like the Venator class could stand up to a handful of Separatist resistant class Light Destroyers, a Star Dreadnought like the Mandator II could withstand an assault of up to a thousand of these warships. As such, the vessel carried reactor equipment large enough to force the length of its hull up to its length of 8 kilometers. So having cut its ties with the Techno Union prior to the Clone Wars, the Kuwait Drive Yards began building starships for the Republic use only. Among its new designs were the Mandator II class, an upgrade of the pre-war Mandator class Dreadnought, which had formed a part of the Kuwait Sector's defenses in peacetime. These heavy vessels form a part of the Supreme Chancellor Palpatine's new centralized Republic Navy during the Clone Wars. So coming in at number 12 is the Mandator III class Dreadnought which is another Mandator, but a Class 3 and not a Class 2 and Class 4, which is previously mentioned. It was a very large Dreadnought scale warship in the Imperial Navy as well as the third class of Star Dreadnought developed under the Mandator series alongside the Bellator class Dreadnought, which was smaller than the three Mandator class warships. The Mandator 3 was specifically designed to be a hulking weapons platform and was a bit longer and more heavily armed than its predecessors and its contemporary cousin. At 12,000 meters in length or 12 kilometers, it was essentially a scaled up version of the Mandators. Several of these participated in the events leading up to the Imperial Civil War. Number 11 Sovereign Super Star Destroyer This was a Super Star Destroyer produced by the Galactic Empire at the behest of the Galactic Emperor Palpatine, who envisioned a fleet of 15,000 meter long vessels. The Sovereign class hosted a crew of 601,670 with 4,075 gunners 
and required a skeleton crew of at least 86,000. During development, it was estimated to require a crew of 600,000. A Sovereign class Superstar Destroyer carried 5 years worth of consumables and could carry 130,000 troops. Like the larger Eclipse class Superstar Destroyer, the Sovereign class featured an Axial Super Laser on par with a Death Star. The Axial Super Laser was also the reason why the ship's helm was designed to be 15 kilometers load for the minimum space required to house these generators. At number 10, the Aserta class Star Dreadnought. This was also a 15 kilometers long ship and had a hull shape similar to the Executor class Star Dreadnought, being primarily shaped like an arrowhead. It was considered the second largest of the standard Star Dreadnought line, with only the Executor class being larger as well as the largest in the Imperial Navy in a family that included the Mandator class ships. The class was equipped with a large amount of gun batteries mounted along the ridge of the ship, as well as the flat dorsal and ventral surfaces. Many of the batteries were positioned in pattern clusters. Its armaments of turbo lasers, while weak in comparison to the Executor class Star Dreadnoughts, was nonetheless powerful enough to nearly vaporize a planet. Number 9. The Eclipse Class Dreadnought also known as the Eclipse class Super Star Destroyer. It was a class of Imperial Super Star Destroyers manufactured by the Kuat Drive Yards and mainly used around six years after the Battle of Endor. Like the Sovereign class, they were regarded as a new generation of Super Star Destroyers. Although technically dwarfed in length by both the Executor class Star Dreadnought and the Vengeance class Dreadnought by 1.5 km, the Eclipse class at 17.5 km long or 11 miles, nonetheless exceeded even the Executor class in terms of overall mass and volume. Its size was large enough for it to be classified as a space station. Coming in at number 8 is the Executor class Star Dreadnoughts, also known as the Super Class Star Destroyers. They were some of the largest and most powerful Imperial starships ever created. Along with other classes of massive Imperial capital ships, they were also referred to as Super Star Destroyers, although they were technically classified as Star Dreadnoughts. The most distinguished Super Star Destroyer was the Executor, the flagship of the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Vader. It measured at 19 kilometers in length and utilizes 13 engine thrusters and were outfitted with a Class 1 hyperdrive, a titanium reinforced hull, over 5,000 turbo lasers, and iron cannon batteries and concussion missile tubes. Number 7. The Vengeance Class Dreadnought this was based on the standard Super Star Destroyer design, the Executor class. As such, the ship class was approximately 19 km long. In addition, because of its dimensions, the ship class sometimes possessed the standard classification of a space station. In contrast with the Executor class, the Vengeance class frame was supplied with a slender build more narrower than the standard Star Destroyers, almost like a sword, in comparison to the usual dagger shape. The Vengeance class height contrasted its length, which was a little more than 150 meters, and with downward sloping armor dominating most of the dorsal frame. The next, at number 6, is the Eye of Palpatine, and this was a colossal asteroid-shaped Super Dreadnought constructed at the behest of Emperor Palpatine during the second year of the Galactic Empire. It was destroyed 12 years after the Battle of Yavin. At more than 19 kilometers long, this deadly warship was the Emperor's first super weapon. It was referred to as both a dreadnought and a battle moon. As part of its secretive origin, the vessel was made to look similar to an asteroid. The reason for this was officially stated as the means of protection from detection by enemy vessels and worlds. Number 5. The Mega Class Star Dreadnought, also known as the Mega Class Star Destroyer. This was a class of Star Dreadnought utilized by the First Order during their conflict with the Resistance. With a length of 13.2 kilometers, but a width of more than 60 kilometers, it was large enough to dock eight Resurgent class Star Destroyers, six externally and two internally. It crewed over 2,225,000 personnel. The only operating ship of its class was the Supremacy, disparagingly nicknamed Snoke's Vaudoir served as the flagship of the Supreme Leader Snoke and the mobile headquarters of the First Order. It was split into two by the Resistance flagship Radus while attempting to destroy the remnants of the Resistance fleet near the planet Krayt. Number 4. The Yuzan Vong Korostrona Also known as worldships in the Galactic Basic Standard, 
They were immensely large, organically created vessels that housed entire communities of the Yuzan Vong, providing them with food and shelter. They also served as staging ground for long battles. Similar in function to the reborn Emperor Palpatine's eclipsed class star destroyers, a world ship was a transport, a battleship, and a psychological weapon in all in one. It is unknown if these figures were systemic for all worships, but the Banu Ras, one of the largest worships, was 120 kilometers across, almost the size of the first Death Star. At number 3 is none other than the original Death Star, also officially named as the DS-1 Orbital Battle Station, or the ultimate weapon in early development stages, and later referred to as Death Star 1. It was a moon-sized deep space mobile battle station constructed by the Galactic Empire. The station was spheroid and measured 160 kilometers or 100 miles in diameter with 357 internal levels. A large concave dish in the northern hemisphere made up the super laser emitter. The station's command bridge was located in the northern hemisphere above the dish of the station's super laser. You know it's big when it has hemispheres instead of parts. So, for the number 2 spot is yet another Death Star, also known as Death Star Mark II or DS2, or simply the second Death Star. It was a partially completed moon-sized battle station constructed by the Galactic Empire as the successor to the first one. It was larger and more powerful than the first one. Like the first Death Star, Death Star II long-term's purpose was to terrorize planets and star systems in league with the Rebel Alliance through the use of its planet-destroying super laser. Upon completion, the Death Star 2 would have an immense battle station size of 200 kilometers in diameter that featured 560 internal levels which could house 2.4 million passengers and crew. And at the number one spot comes the center point station. Known to the Kilix as the Kola Ralok or the World Puller, it was an ancient space station that was capable of moving entire planets with its tractor beams. It was created by the Third Hive a hundred thousand years before the Battle of Yavin. With a width of a hundred kilometers and a length of 350 kilometers, it was larger than both the two Death Stars. From a distance, it appeared as a huge partially translucent sphere with two small cylindrical poles. Centerpoint Station contained within its colossal bulk an extremely large intricate collection of ultra-high energy systems, a true relic of a bygone age. And with this, we come to the end of the video, so do like, share and subscribe for more videos. Do click on the notification bell for regular and actual notifications. And for the new viewers, do check out our channel as we have tons of other videos on monsters and creatures.